Hey there, professor, look what I brought. Now tell me what's my rock. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of What's My Rock. I'm your geology professor, Dr. Abstract. Uh, this is a show where real people bring in their rocks, and I try to help people identify them. I'm here with my new friends, David and Fred. Thanks for coming in, gentlemen. Um, so if I'm going to first ask where you guys live. So where do you where do you guys uh, live, David? San Bernardino, down the street. San Bernardino, down the street. Okay. Same thing. Same, Same thing, right down the street. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Inland Empire. All right. Yeah. Good. Um, and um, uh, I mean, what do you guys what do you guys do for a living? When, it helps. It helps me know uh, what people do because then I'm like, when you're out looking for rocks, I might mean, I might have more information. Electrician. Electrician. Okay. Cool. Uh, rock hunter. A rock hunter. Yeah, excellent. yeah. <laughs> and anything else, you know, I'm retired. Retired. Yeah. Well, what did you do before? The glass company. A glass. Yeah. yeah. A glass company. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you know a lot about yeah. Yeah. silicate materials, yeah, then, yeah, which yeah. is what most rocks are. Okay. Good. Then we'll have we'll, this will be fun for you. Uh, okay, so you got um, a variety of rocks here. Um, what joint would you want to see? That one? Uh, yeah, let's let's start let's start with this one right here. Um, this is a um, very beautiful uh, piece. Um, I'm gonna put my glasses on because it's that time of life. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, what? One of the first things that I think of anytime um, somebody brings me a rock is is it natural or not? Yeah. Um, because you know, people bring all kinds of stuff in here. Um, and this, uh, this does look natural to me. Um, it looks like it's made of silicon dioxide, right? So SiO2, the same composition of glass. Yeah. And that stuff in nature makes a variety of minerals. The most famous one is quartz. Um, and that's what it looks like to me on the edge here. These are little quartz crystals. Um, and it also makes this blobby stuff uh, that that grows in in cracks and grows in um, uh, you know you've seen a geode before yeah so some geodes have crystals in them but some geodes have um, more of a blobby look on the inside mm -hmm. it all has the same chemicals it's all silicon dioxide um, sometimes it makes beautiful crystals like quartz and sometimes it looks blobby we have a really fancy word for this um, this appearance we call it botryoidal which is um, kind of looks like um, a bunch of wavy um, wavy blobby stuff. Um, and I think that's what this is. There are these uh, crystals of quartz and botryoidal um, silica, which looks like, in fact, there's a little bit, can you see how there's a little bit of a sparkliness on the outside? Yeah, a little bit. Those are almost certainly going to be microscopic quartz crystals. And some of it looks smooth. What's the red? Uh, the red, um, well, quartz, it can get um, some impurities in it. Could be any number of things. It could be a little tiny bit of maybe iron. I mean, it's growing in a dirty environment, right? Some kind of rock. But so, where did you find this one? I to tell you the truth, I don't remember. I don't remember where I got that. Where did it come from? Well, this there's a um, so believe it or not, um, so quartz is is everywhere, and it's on our beaches, right? Is it really? Yeah, quartz sand. Most of our beaches are quartz sand, and there's a reason for that. It says quartz does not dissolve in water. Mm -hmm at the surface of the earth. But inside the earth, it gets hot and, and there's a little bit of pressure and yeah. that actually makes quartz dissolve in water. Oh, I didn't know that, I never did. And so what happens is if you go deep in the earth, groundwater and deep water goes through there um, and dissolves quartz from mm -hmm. say a sandstone or wherever. The, imagine we have a water, water with minerals in it with a lot of silica in it. It's at high pressure, high mm -hmm. temperature down in the earth. And then it goes through and into some gets an environment where it gets a little colder, all that silica is going to precipitate out and it's going to make a little quartz crystals. How long would it take to make one of that? This? Um, that's a great question. Um, uh, it, it, probably at least to make this, this could have taken a million years, <laughs> right? It could, have it could have taken quicker though. It depends on the, depends on the environment. I mean, it could have taken, um, it could have taken, uh, you know, I, I'm going to say no less than tens of thousands of years, like a very long time. So just, just to conclude, this, yes. this, this is um, silicon dioxide, quartz crystals, and a, a, what we call botryoidal crystals, um, uh, quartz that were formed in a blobby shape, almost certainly because of, of fluids underground. Well, well, By the way, this is not an accident that it's nice and flat like this. See how flat that is? Yeah. That means it probably formed you know, in a, a layer horizontally, you know, rocks form layers, right? So it probably formed between two layers of rock, or it could have formed in some kind of what we call a vein, which is like 
yeah, some cool. sort of thing that shoots through rocks. So, okay, so I'm, I'm going to call that quartz. I don't think we need any further idea. I'll do one quick thing mm -hmm. um, just to demonstrate something about it. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i try to scratch it, if you don't mind. Brilliant. Scratch it with this. This is a file. It's an iron file. And one of the things that we like to do um, uh, in, in the field is we take an iron nail or an iron file. And quartz cannot be scratched by an iron file. It's hard. You carry one of those with you? Well, I actually, I actually like to carry a little nail. Oh, okay. Or okay. I actually have a dental pick <laughs> that I keep. Um, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Any metal really, well, not any metal, any sort of steel related iron metal will be softer than quartz. Okay. And so it's just a simple test we can do. I'm going to do it on the side here. I'm going to try my best to scratch it. I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually writing. I'm, <laughs> it, I'm actually making a mark on the quartz, but it's from the file. It's not, I'm not actually scratching. I'm not scratching the quartz at all. Um, that mark is actually, it's like I'm writing, it's like I'm writing, writing with an iron pen because the pen, the, the iron is softer than the quartz. So this is definitely hard um, and definitely harder than iron. So that's, that's a simple test you can do. Anytime you're in the field, by the way, you think you might see quartz, just take your nail out. You're a rock hound. Yeah. We'll keep a nail in your I didn't pocket. Even know that. Don't put you put it in a fanny pack. Don't put it in your pocket. <laughs> okay, you. fine. But bring a bring a little nail with you and just scratch stuff. This one right here, by the way, um, I know you wanted to get to that one. Okay, but but I that. Know you're excited about this one. This yeah, one that's... almost certainly is a piece of. This is a piece of quartz. No, or I don't it's what... a piece of glass. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. I scratch it. Okay, I'm gonna try to scratch it here, and that I'm able to rub that scratch off. Let me see. I can. Let me check with my hand lens. Sometimes to see if you scratch it, you have to look at it microscopically. Yeah, I don't think I made a scratch. I think I made a mark. Okay, so this one, um, this one, in my opinion, is almost certainly, I, now the question, is it natural? It's natural or it came out of the wars on Redlands. Okay. And I found it in the wars and then, you know, it's a little darker than that, but I tumbled it in a tumbler. Oh, you tumbled it. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. I tumbled it. Okay, so what did it look like when you found it in the wash? Kind of that, just a little dark, you know. Did it? But then I seen this piece where the, right there, that piece, and it's not. You mean that it's like a little crack inside? Yeah, yeah. But it's, how would they crack it inside of it and not be on the outside of it? Uh, that's a good question. Well, I'm still wondering if this is. Uh, I would have liked to have seen it. What it looked like when you pulled it out of the wash, right. I think. Yeah. Um Because uh, so this this is this is almost certainly going to be silicon dioxide, okay. the same material that this is made of, mm -hmm. the same material that your glass is made of, okay. right? And the same material that quartz is made of, right? right. So, um, so you know, nature likes SiO2, silicon dioxide, and we use it too, right? So the question is, is it natural? Um, it's hard to say from this because it's been tumbled, but it could have been a chunk of glass, but it's also not uncommon for there to be chunks of quartz that are this big. Yeah. But your question was, how could it have a little crack yeah, in it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'll just say that um, crystals have all kinds of imperfections in them. Okay. And I don't think there's anything uncommon about having a crack that's totally inside. It could have it could have um, been under stress um, on, under the earth. Like, let me give you an example. So in, uh, um, you know, one of the ways that we tell real diamonds from fake diamonds when the jeweler a jeweler bubbles. Will, yeah bubbles are in it yeah and they'll look inside for imperfections in the diamond crystals because yeah. the natural crystals always have imperfections yeah and so there's so having an imperfection is not necessarily unnatural to me no I mean, so, I see go ahead sure you look at do that with that yeah. piece that that thin thing and it looks like there's bubbles in it hundreds of hundreds of thousands of bubbles you see them all bubbles in inside or on the outside i mean outer, outer part of it i mean yeah that yeah when you look at it microscopically there's definitely some irregularity it's not perfectly smooth right uh -huh. on the on the outside but you're talking about the inside i'm, I'm talking, talking about the inside it i'm having trouble seeing inside it hang on let me let me look a little because the outside is frosted and so it's preventing me from getting a good look at the inside that's what i was trying to do you know, get that frost out of it. What I would do is I would, so in order to get the frost out, you, you're going to need to tumble it with something that has a much smaller, smaller grit size. Yeah. Do you have any like aluminum oxide? I got powder? some, just got some. You just got some? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I would try that with like, and it should be, um, here, here's a here's a tip. The 
if you want something to be really well polished, yeah. then the, the grit size needs to be smaller than the wavelength of light. The wavelength of light is 300 to 700 nanometers. So that's a fraction of a micron. So I think in our department here, we have powder, aluminum oxide powder that's 0.05 microns, which is yeah. 50 nanometers. So try to find something, and that's probably what you got. Okay. But in order to get a polish, because now that way it take a polish being a rock like that, it would get clear of the glass like. Oh, it should, especially because aluminum aluminum oxide is harder than quartz. Oh, okay. Or, okay. E or even if this isn't quartz, this is a silicon dioxide. Okay. And so it's it's harder than it's harder than this. So it should polish it pretty quick. In fact, I wouldn't leave it in too long. It might <laughs> shrink it down. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so, um, but I, I got to be honest. I'm having trouble looking to see inside to see the bubbles that you're talking about. There's bubbles, um, millions of them. Maybe you could show me what you right, mean. Right, right. Right along this, right here, the edge. On the edge, okay. And I'm looking at that, and you'll see millions of bubbles. Okay. Um, that, to me, sounds like it's more like an industrial glass, then, if that's, well, if that's, that's the case. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I'm still not, I'm not seeing what you're calling bubbles. What I'm seeing is the the um, the frosting up close. I'm oh, seeing the, the irregularity of the yeah. frosting. So I'm not saying that there aren't bubbles in them. No, 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 I'm no, not no. able to see them. So, um, but it's hard for me to say whether this is natural or not. It certainly would be a big chunk of glass, right? Like who's going to yeah. make a piece of glass yeah. that yeah. big, yeah. right? Um, uh, usually we think of glass bottles. That's the most common thing we'll find. Um, it's pretty, you know, it's like an inch in diameter. Um, so, but it could be a chunk of quartz. Um, in fact, I think when I say quartz, natural quartz, um, it could be that, and that's because of this weird imperfection, no. frankly. But it could also that imperfection could also come from from glass. So I'm gonna I'm gonna not I'm gonna um, say I don't I'm not sure. I think the material is definitely silicon dioxide, okay. um, just because it's very common. It, I can't scratch it with this. Um, it's hard for me to say because it's been tumbled. Okay. If it's natural or not. So that's in that story. Um, do you have do you have pictures of it when you found it? No, I don't. You don't? Okay. No, I mean, taking pictures of things, you know, when you're younger, it just wasn't called for. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Just yeah. Find, yeah. It, you just know. find something and you're just out. Yeah. Um, so um, anything else to add about this one before, no. before we move on? Okay. okay. All right. Let's get to this bad boy. Okay. This is get really it on interesting. There. Okay. And I'm showing something here. On the back side. No, that's yeah, right. let's, let's start with this side first because, um, okay, so um, now this one I'd like to know where you found it for sure. Because okay. this is, first of all, this is absolutely a natural material. Really? This yeah, is definitely a natural material. Okay, and there's two green we bubbles here. We found this right down the street over here on 4th Street. 4th Street. Fourth Street. Or next to the hospital. Next to the hospital. Okay, interesting. Okay. And, um, one day I was over at a friend's house and this guy was over there and he had a, a stone that he must have hit it with his hammer or something like that, and it broke open like an egg, and it had a perfectly stone in it. But if he thought it was a diamond or whatever, but it was not. It was a uh, some uh, probably red. it sounds like a geode. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would have been it would have been quartz crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was telling me and this other guy, and I said, "Where is it at?" And he said, "Well, you go over to this place and you can find and find uh, stones over there." And I said, "Well, I didn't understand." Him. So I drove them on over there about a week later, and there was these stones popping up. You know, they looked good and everything, and they all had markings on them, and I was taking them, doing the truck and everything, and then we got home, they said it was a big time off. Yeah. Um, and actually, well, yeah. Kind of and there was a painting there. It's good, too. That's a good painting. Yeah, yeah no. I mean, like, look, they, you, this is, I, I, I am. There's a guy with a knife. I mean, it's it's really beautiful because what they did was they whoever did it they they used the these are natural yeah, 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 yeah. markings on the rock and they're using that as the 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 lay of the land there, but um, and and they're incorporating it's really beautiful I love it. <laughs> How come um, this glows? It's the only thing that glows, and but none of this glows on the painting. Can you see it? I mean, I, I can't absolutely. When I when I look at it like this, it's yeah. definitely shiny right shiny there, right shiny right there. there and and it's not, there's a tiny bit of shine here. Nowhere. Um, there's a tiny, not as much. I agree, this is not as shiny. But I, I've done a little bit of of arting and painting in my in my day, and I think all that means this is just this has been paint that's been watered down, like a watercolor. You guys ever used watercolor before? 
Well, this, this was done back in the 1800s, you remember, they're not going to have conventional paint slippers down there. They're not going to have brushes or anything like that. They couldn't be oil paint. I mean, I mean, they were using oil paint in the Renaissance, right? So um, they had plenty of oil paint back then. And they would have had turpentine. They could have used a paint thinner turpentine. I mean, depending on how old this was. Um, but I, I think what's interesting about this rock, first of all, let's talk about what it is naturally. So this rock um, is a sandstone. A sandstone? A sandstone. Uh, it's a layered sandstone. Um, let me let me look at it. Let me look at it up close. Just absolutely, absolutely. The sandstone is is in beds. Um, let me just look at it up close to confirm that I I think it is a sandstone. If you look at it with a hand lens, you'll actually be able to see tiny little sand grains in it. That's what that's what this is. Um, sandstones you should be able even though the the main material is quartz. Um, sometimes you can make a little, is it okay if I make a small scratch sure, on the yeah, side? Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to do anything on this beautiful yeah. painting. I'm going to do a small scratch on the side. And sandstones will often, you can scratch them. The sand is harder than metal, but because they're held together with basically, you know, a weak glue, you should be able to, yeah, see, and I can make a nice scratch right there. Yeah, I mean, even when I do it, I can see, I can see the, a plume of sand yeah, yeah. coming up. And this is not, um, that's definitely a scratch. I can feel it with my fingernail. Okay, so I made a scratch on that. So that's another little tip for when something is a, a sandstone, it, you, sh you should typically be able to scratch it a little bit. So where, did, where is this in the heart of San Bernardino, right? Not a foot in the ground. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, a whole bunch of little ones. Right, right. So in, in the San Bernardino area, we don't really have sandstones like this. So this would have come in from they, this, you know, we call this like a flagstone, right? Like yeah. a paving, it's some kind of paving stone. It's like sometimes, stone. yeah, exactly. Sometimes they're made of uh, concrete or cement, but sometimes nature gives us yeah. beautiful paving stones, right? And so this is a sandstone. It, it was formed um, either, it, it was an ancient beach deposit, like, you know, a beach, like, uh, or it could have been an ancient river deposit. Any Anywhere you see sand in nature today, in a wash, yeah. At the beach, um, in a, in the desert, a desert dune, mm. any of those things, you give that 100 million years, 300, 400 million years, that'll harden and become a hard rock. But it'll maintain the layers that that form because we're 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 Seven, pouring yeah. sand into layers when we're building it up. So it's 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 common um, and it's expected usually that sandstones will actually they're have. All, they're all flat like this. Yeah, yeah. So so there's somewhere out there. There's a quarry. And somebody was chipping away these sandstones and they were selling it as paving stones. Okay. And okay, okay. Some, some of it ended up on a truck and went to San Bernardino. Yeah. Sandstone deposits that look like this, um, just off the top of my head, would be on the north side of the uh, San Gabriel Mountains. There's some sandstone deposits there. Um, up, to, up near towards Ojai, there's sandstone deposits. Um, when you go out into the desert, the Mojave, we can start to get some sandstones. Uh, really, and we get to Arizona, of course, that's just sandstones. They should call that the sandstone state <laughs> instead of the Grand Canyon state because there's sandstones everywhere, especially in Northern Arizona, Southern Utah. Um, so it's not clear. There's a lot of a lot of sources within 300 miles where this could have come from or 400 if we're talking about Arizona. So the painting could have been done anywhere. The painting could could have been done anywhere. So, so let's talk about these interesting features on here because there's some yeah. beautiful marks, and I think that you might have thought these were painted, but these are actually not painted. These are, are like a plant. Or something. It's not a plant. It's these are oxides. So um, they're oxidized um, oxidized minerals. So it's probably iron uh, and another el another element called manganese. You ever heard of manganese? Manganese molecules. Well, manganese nodules okay. are found on the seafloor. Okay, that's yeah, right. right. um, but manganese is just another element here. I've got a periodic table right here. So here's there's iron is right there, and right next to it is manganese. Okay. So they they're very common. They're right next to each other on the periodic table. You guys have seen the periodic table before, right? So these are the elements. Those are the building blocks of our universe, <laughs> right? Um, and so they occur, they, they can occur and in small amounts inside sandstones. Do they, uh, turn it up, turn this up, yep. uh, like that, you mean? Fossilized plants. They look like fossilized plants. That's right. That's right. But what, what they, they actually, we call, we have a name for it. Um, this, this, this appearance of a mineral, we call it dendritic and, uh, dend dendritic has a root word dendra or something from mm -hmm. the Greek, which means tree. So it's sort of this br or branching. So when the crystals grow, they're going to sort of grow 
outwards like that, and as they grow, they grow in a fractal, kind of a fractal pattern. You heard the yeah. word fractal? Okay. It's like sort of like Broken a hallucinogenic up. hippie thing you see in like, like paisley growing. Okay. Like um, anyway, so um, this is a dendritic crystal pattern, and it's very common on, on rocks. Um, what happens is, is, again, water is getting in the rock somehow, um, or it could be related to um, uh, wind at the surface. Wind, yeah. wind is, is bringing in material. Um, we call this desert, it's a, it's a variant of something we call desert varnish. Uh, Does that sound familiar to you? No. Like if a rock sits out in the desert, it gets a coating on it over tens of thousands of years because the wind and rain yeah. kind of just messes up the mm. outside of the rock. Um, so this is, this is what we call, uh, in, a, in, a most, in the most general term, this is a, a, a feature produced by what we call weathering, which is just the, okay. a rock sitting around, interacting with the environment yeah. and breaking That's down, right. um, and it's growing these little grains. And you can, it's really, really complicated. Um, so we've got these orange bands in here. Which is which is going to be more iron oxidized iron that's that's been sweeping through the rock up here, beautiful orange bands, um, and then we have these uh, these dendritic oxide growths, which are probably more of a I'm going to guess I'm, this might not be correct, but probably more of a mixture of manganese and iron oxides that are growing in there. Um, but it's it's very beautiful. What I when what I of course love about it is that some artist looked at that and said that looks like. Mm -hmm the surface of, of some forest or something, the ground surface, and then put, you know, Davy Crockett or something in there. Was he roasting a squirrel or something? Was mm -hmm. he? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right, now you were, you were gonna ask me a question about how old. Yeah, how would we know how old the painting was? That, had... that I don't know. That is something, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can, we can do something called carbon dating, mm -hmm. right? But this is probably too young to carbon date. Okay. Um, I, I frankly don't, this is, you would have to talk to an artist or a historian to get some opinions on how to, how to, like, I would talk to uh, an, an art curator mm -hmm. and maybe okay. just send him a picture just say, hey, I found this in a yard in, in San Bernardino. Um, and here's a, you know, here's a picture of this. Is this meaningful in the art world? Because um, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I do the natural yeah. part. The colors are still pretty good. But the problem is, you said it was like buried or something. Yeah, yeah. buried. Like, buried. Like, they stuck part on the ground. It was buried underground, yeah. and the colors still look good like that. Yeah, and this, this side was over like that. Okay, so I would think something buried underground like that, and the colors that still look pretty good, it can't be that old. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't think it's there for a hundred years if yeah. it's underground. That that's. I don't have any basis. Going through right. It. Just, Again, that's just me. I'm just. That's well. That's kind of true. Um, I, I would have expected there to be more destruction of the paint mm -hmm. if it were like, say, 150 years old, right? Where were you searching for this name? What'd you call it? Red Bart? The yeah. signature Red Bart? On the internet. Just, On the internet? Yeah. Just anywhere? Okay. It came up with I, it's Bart almost like red. this is something like a tourist would have bought. Like they're driving Route 66 from Chicago to San Bernardino. They're in Arizona. They're in a forest in Northern Arizona up and near Williams. Up rocks. And there's some guy off the side of the road picking up rocks and painting them. You know what I mean? That that could, and then they picked one up. They said, "Oh, this will be nice in our new home in California." Yeah. And so they come to California to San Bernardino to their new life, and they have the souvenir from their cross country trip. But what is it? They don't. I mean, I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, the detail that he put into this is just unreal. When you get down, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I mean, I've seen. You know, you've seen like roadside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Artists, you know what I mean. So I, I, this is completely speculative. It could have been the person that lived there. It could have been he could have they could have bought it at an art show in Southern California. Um, but this this Western this style of Westernness this is more like like a Rocky Mountain man yeah, yeah. to me, not like a California man. Uh, especially like the coonskin cap. Yeah, that to me is like. You know, that's Daniel Boone, which yeah. he would have been like, Crockett. like the 1810s or something or something yeah. like that. And he would have been in, Leathers this is like, like Kentucky, this is like early westward expansion. It feels like more of a Colorado thing to me, but, <laughs> okay. um, but I, I, I don't know. There's no reason it couldn't have been California. It's just somebody, I mean, I, I could. Is there this type of stone in Colorado? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, there's plenty yeah. of these kinds of stones in Colorado. Um, um, where it was painted is, is unknown. Okay. Um, 
it's a, uh, I haven't seen anything. No one's brought anything like this in here before. So okay. I would I would I would talk to a curator at an art museum. Cool. Okay. Um, or, I, and see what they think. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's possible that someone's heard. Maybe maybe they have a way of searching for who this person might have been. Well, I went to one in Redlands, and they told me, yeah, we can't do that. They wanted to donate it. Yeah, want, no, donate it. Oh, they have to donate it? Yeah, and oh, I okay. said, yeah, no, I, I ain't going to donate nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is cool. You can right. keep this. I mean, this is neat. Um, in, unless you find out it's worth a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, and then, then I'll I want sell you, it. Then I want you to sell it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right, we got one last one here. Yes, sir. Um, let's go ahead and have a look here. This one, um, where they beat on. This is a, um, where did you find this one? I don't know. I don't know that either. Some, a friend? Mm, probably. Okay. It's one of those ones you beat, beat, right. uh, Oh, right it's like a, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it certainly looks like something you could use it's to cool, pound right? an yeah, acorn. Yeah, right. Um, well, let me have a look at my hand lens here and try to figure out what kind of, what kind of rock this one is. Um, okay, this rock has the black, a really, a, uh, there's a, a black with very little detail in it, but then there's these little crystals that are sitting in it, and they're pretty small, and some of them are kind of long. So this to me looks like a volcanic rock. Hmm. So uh, this was a piece of lava, and it had little crystals that grew in it. And um, these crystals look like a mineral called uh, feldspar. I don't know if you've heard of feldspar before. Mm -hmm. um, they look like plagioclase feldspar. That's a, that's a lot of syllables, I know, but mm -hmm. that's probably the mineral it is. So this is a chunk of volcanic rock. So no, absolutely no information of, no. do you remember who gave it to you? No, I don't remember. Someone just left, they just left on your doorstep and ran? Oh, you no. need to scratch this right here with how it looked like it was the origin for wearing it. Uh, say that again. Yeah, scratch it right there. It looks oh. like the origin for. Oh <coughs> yeah, that that, that yeah, could have right. been. That could have been. Um, I, it's hard to say exactly if they. That, that's possible. Like it could have came from any volcano though. So I mean, last thing. Yeah. Well, well, it it didn't come out of the volcano like this. It came out of the volcano like a big ugly rock. Like you want to hand me one of those dark black rocks right there? Please. Yeah, that's fine. That the one you got there, Fred's good. So this is a volcanic rock here. Okay. Um, and this has got a lot of bubbles in it. Really frothy. Um, and this came That's out of a volcano, the volcano, and then it, then this poor little fellow ended up in some river where it was tossed around and ground up and, and That's what it turned out. out to be? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is, this is, this is technically... This one's heavier though. Like that. Yeah, well that one has a lot of, this is not the best rock to show because it, that has a lot of um, what we call vesicles in it, which are gas, mm -hmm. gas mm. holes, and that makes it feel a lot less heavy than this one. This one doesn't have as many um, gas bubbles in it okay um but um so this came out of a volcano uh and then it was eroded into some by by the wind and the rain yeah. and, and washed into a riverbed and it and it tumbled around like a rock tumbler right so a river is basically a mm -hmm. natural yeah, rock yeah, tumbler yeah. um and it probably and we're in california i wouldn't be surprised that this this was actually collected on a beach <laughs> so maybe mm -hmm. it ended up on a beach you, you go to the americans and grants of corn <laughs> I would think a Native American would have could have would have used this as corn, but without any additional information, I don't right, know. If, right. I don't know. That would be an archaeological artifact, oh, right? It would be archaeological. Yeah. I don't know if this is archaeological. I mean, if I were trying to grind acorns, this would be suitable for me. I don't know if I want something bigger. I don't know. So that's what I'm going to call it. this is a stream rounded uh, cobble with a volcanic origin. Hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. Sound good. Uh -huh. um, all right. Any more more questions? We, no, we sir. Good? So yes, all right. So we got we got we got some 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 precipitated quartz um, with some um, uh, um, some kind of a silica material, botryoidal quartz. We have um, silicon dioxide uh, in a rock tumbler of uncertain natural or um, uh, man-made origin found in a creek. We've got a sandstone with dendritic oxides on it that was uh, painted on by some artist. And then we have our, our eroded volcanic pebble, cobble. This could came from any volcano anywhere? Uh, yeah, this, this looks kind of like it could be an andesite, which might be from an old Sierra Nevada volcano. Mm. Okay. I think that might be what this might be. It could be a basaltic. And a sandesite? Which, or an egg. Or a what? An egg. An egg. It could, be, it could be an egg. Let's crack it open. <laughs> um, could be an egg. That would be amazing if this were an egg. You would be famous. But I don't think it's an egg. Sorry, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, and there we go. Thank you. All right. Well, gentlemen, Fred, it was nice thanks, to meet you so, so much. And thanks so much. Thank you for coming in, David. You're welcome. Um, it was fun to, fun to meet you guys and meet your Good. rocks. And good All luck right. with that. I want to know what happens with that. Oh, yeah, I'll right. send you a letter to let you know. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Dr. Abstract. We'll see you next time. Uh, don't forget to uh, follow us on Instagram at Tectonic City. Uh, and until next time, happy rock hounding. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's time to recap with Dylan. Uh, well, those are some interesting rocks they brought in. What do you think? Let's talk about um, the very first one, the one that I called uh, sort of the botryoidal. Botryoidal. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of when you said geode. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely looking at that. I've seen geodes like that in the gem and mineral shows. Mm -hmm. And so that didn't really surprise me at all. Hardness test. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's pretty mm -hmm. confident. I mean, I would have made that assessment myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. And yeah, and what about that little ball? That other ball, weird. Um, mm -hmm. I, as you mentioned, I would have loved to have seen what it originally was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I am kind of on the fence about it. I don't really necessarily. I'm not convinced that it is natural, but at the same time, mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that it's an artificial thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those, maybe we don't know unless we can somehow yeah. miraculously get more information on it. Yeah, I sort of wish you had a, had a picture. But, yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to know once you tumble it. Because mm -hmm. it, it could go either way. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like, if you found that into like a local wash, mm -hmm. you'd have to have like a quartz that's really clear initially to get that clear. Mm -hmm. So that you know would be quite a find in the local mountains. That's a that's a really good point. Um, if it were natural, you'd like to see a lot more imperfections in it. So it would have been a really big quartz crystal. Yeah. Then again, it could have been. It's not weird to get a you know you know a two inch long quartz crystal yeah um it's not i mean they're not everywhere but you know but yeah you know now now that you mentioned that that really there should have been a little bit more more cracking more imperfections for that to be natural mm -hmm. um but it's i would say 75 percent likely to be man-made yeah can't rule out natural i would not be surprised if it were natural Trying to think of a natural or a man-made glass, though, that's also that thick, you know, like because that's too thick to be glass bottles. Right. So. And also, yeah. you have to, like, I don't think a chunk of glass would have caught his eye, right? If it were yeah. like a piece of a, like it could be a bottom of a vase, right? Mm, true. Like you yeah. want a little bit of ballast at the bottom of a vase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he's probably he probably would see that and be like, "There, it's a piece of glass." And he's a glass maker, right? <laughs> he's yeah, a glass true. blower. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, like, mm. you know what I mean? So, like, why would that have caught his eye? Um, I don't know. It's a it's mysterious. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It was it was a cool little specimen that looks like something yeah. you some trinket you find in a a rock shop or something. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, anyways. Uh, so the next one, let's do yeah the the Grizzly Adams one. Okay, so that one, if my, my suspicions are correct, I think that might be from the Wasatch Range. Uh -huh. And the reason is, is that- Rocky Mountains. Been to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, mm -hmm. and I've seen dealers that have this dendritic pattern mm -hmm. on sandstone. And I actually own one at my own house. Oh. And so it's like, oh, that I talked to the dealer and he's like, from Utah, he got it from the the mm -hmm. Wasatch Range, I believe. Mm -hmm. So at least it could be from there. Now there could be other sandstones with dendritic patterns. Of course, Southwest is a little conducive to that, so yep. it could be a few others. But right. the the sandstone itself actually looked almost the same as what I had. So mm -hmm. maybe that that's what I suspect. Um, as for the paint, I think. It's probably more, as you mentioned, oil or acrylic, only because if it was water-based, I think it would have washed off over after being buried for that many years. Right, right. So, and you know, it being still vibrant after that many years, I think it's probably with it being buried, it was protected from 
any solar damage. That's true. That's um, true. You think of like what they uncover like in Pompeii these days. That's a good it's, point. Yeah. Uh, really vibrant painting. So mm -hmm. um, as for when the painting, I don't know. My great grandfather painted rocks. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were clear, yep. clearing out his house, um, there, there were plenty of those. So yep. he wasn't in the 1800s, mm -hmm. but still, you know, that is a, a long held tradition, I guess, that's, that lives in Americana. That's right. And I mean, shoot, even even now, there's like what the, what do they call it? The little, the little painted rocks that people leave around. It says, you know, stay hopeful or something. You yeah, know, it's got these little, little messages. Cute little, little messages. That's a, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. People do that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, people have been painting rocks since there have been rocks and humans. Mm -hmm. um, paleolithic cave drawings or whatever. So yeah, yeah, I, it's cool. I mean, it's kind of fun and it's a pretty mm -hmm. decent, decent artist. I got to say that was, uh, yeah. that was cool. That was, yeah. that was very, had a lot of hipster authenticity to it. <laughs> I, I could see that sitting in some bar over in, in uh, Highland Park, Los Angeles or something. <laughs> I, I would love to hear like if he gets it to an art curator yeah, to see what they yeah, say. Yeah. So that would be that'd be interesting. Yeah. Uh, and the last one, the uh, the elongated uh, cobble. Cobble. Yeah. I uh, so I had a chance to look at it closely, and I do agree mm -hmm. that it is possibly volcanic. Mm -hmm. I've seen basaltic andesites in particular from, I think it's Little Shastina mm -hmm. or Shastina. Okay. Uh, that has similar texture. Shastina up in the Cascades. Up in the Cascades. Northern, Northern California, yeah. Yeah, it's a side cone of Mount Shasta. Right. And um, and there's also other basaltic andesites that are closer. I mean, technically, Devil's Postpile is mm -hmm. a basaltic andesite, though mm -hmm. we don't see as large of plagioclase crystals, so. Correct. Um, yeah, but, I, when you look at it, if it's a Native American artifact, you look at the trade networks that were going on, it doesn't surprise me if he found it locally, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it originated up in the Cascades. Yeah, and if, if it, first of all, if, if, if it's basaltic, there's plenty of basalt all up and down the Mojave and the mm -hmm. Eastern Sierra. Uh, the andesite would be the sort of remnant volcanics that are scattered here and there as little, um, uh, these sort of, leftover erosional remnants of the, the volcanoes that used to be on top of the Sierra Nevadas. Because as, as you know, the Sierra Nevadas are just the, the guts of a form of volcanic range, mm -hmm. of an andesitic arc right. range. So, yeah. um, so that's, nothing's unusual about that. Of course, mm -hmm. we don't know where, where the friend found it. Yeah. <laughs> and he can't remember either. So he has a lot of nice friends bringing him rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that. Yeah. I wish I had people bringing me rocks. Actually, no, I don't no, wish no, that. I've got enough rocks. <laughs> yeah, I, I have some friends bring me rocks yeah. and some are good. Some, yeah, some is good. like, And they're oh, all nice. They're yeah. nice people. So, all right. All right. Any last, uh, last words? I think we pretty much covered yeah, it. I think I, we did. I, that, this was a fun one. I like this one. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a cool rock, so. Uh, all right, everyone, thanks for watching. This is uh, What's My Rock. I'm Dr. Abstract. This is Dylan Terry. We'll see you next time. If you would like to be uh, featured on What's My Rock, uh, shoot us a message. And uh, if you live in Southern California, we can, we can make it happen. Maybe. <laughs> all right. All thank right. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it all. That's why they call me a professional. I know you're proud of what you got, but this rock ain't worth till it's quiet. I'm not saying that you'll never be wealthy, but this preoccupation doesn't seem healthy. Don't give up your day job, you better keep it a hobby on the weekend.